Magic, so back for this little mini-series, we've got Scottish Whale McBride Ace, he is back in town again. And this time we're going to be going over the next best goalkeepers, the ones that either aren't currently playing or they're in an unlicensed division, something like that. And again, I think they're all U23 at first glance, so we'll be going through that today. Mark, thanks a lot for joining us again, buddy. It's an absolute pleasure. No problem. <laughs> Feels like forever since the last time we did one of these. <laughs> <laughs> it's not really been forever, no. <laughs> anyway, moving on. <laughs> so the, this sheet, Mark, uh, on you know the first couple of times I, I went through it, you can tell quite quickly that a lot of these guys, have, you know, they all get some decent profiles, but you quick, quickly realise, this might make a point here, sorry, is that none of them are starters. They're all quite um, backup youth yeah. guys. There is the odd one, like Atani in here. Osaka is a rotation option, whatever. But these are the next best guys. I didn't make the cut for the last uh, section of the sheet of the last play, uh, the last video. If you could hit the subscribe button, I do daily videos on so rare, everything from hints, tips, and tricks all the way through to live streams and tips on cheap players to buy. That will also automatically enter you into my March giveaway. I'm giving away a rare Davy Classen, who's a midfielder for Ajax, and two limited goalkeepers. If you want to stick around to the end of the video, we'll get into all the giveaway stuff again there. Is there, is there one on this list that stands out to you? Is somebody who you're excited about? How do you want to tackle um, Marky? Yeah, I mean, well, obviously this is the kind of cheaper end of things as well. I mean, obviously the starters are pretty mad in terms of prices and things as well, you know. So I think you want to maybe highlight straight away, obviously this this sheet from six weeks ago is the Kaiser, or the, I think I've spelled his name wrong, it's Kaiser. Um, but... Um, he was selling limited wise for fourteen pounds fifty, and I picked up a good few of them. And obviously, Pai has been dropped. He's playing. He's been told he's number one, and now he's like two seventy, three hundred quid. So, you know, get your calculator out for that one. That that's a nice <laughs> uplift. Yeah. But I mean, it, that that is like you know, kind of one of the main reasons why you would get these guys. You either want to get in so that you've got a future starting goalkeeper or. If they're cheap enough like that, 14, 15, 20 quid, then maybe you pick up a couple and you can sell them on for a good profit as well. So I think he, he really stands out because he's managed to get in and he's a good example of when goalkeepers get in at that age and they stay in, how, how much they go up in value, really. Um, big time. So there. Yeah. Um, big big uplift. Yeah, and he's definitely he's definitely the tail uh he's definitely the tail of the success story of this sheet so far, undoubtedly. Uh looking at the prices, yeah. you know, when you put this together. And he's a Dutch under twenty one goalkeeper. I mean, like like maybe fourteen fifty was a bit mad for him in the first place, but he's the Dutch under twenty one goalkeeper, so that in itself like brings a bit of value. You just think, well, you know, he's playing at a certain level and obviously you don't know how long it's going to take these guys to get in and he's getting in quite quickly, so much so that I get outbid in the rare auction and then two days later he got in. But I, I built up some limited, so I'm not I'm not going to complain about that. But um, it's just nice to see him playing, so, so that's good. Um, it's a, obviously a quite big list there, but there's kind of certain things I'm looking for here in terms of backup goalkeepers. So... Are they playing cup games? You know, there's some guys on here who don't play like normally, but then they play cup games. So Diogo Souza and Tyler Spore, the reason he stuck out is because he plays every cup game. He actually played recently because other goalkeeper got suspended and he got a clean sheet. Nice. And he's now selling for 70 or 80, even though he's not a number one. I think he might have dipped a wee bit again, but on the clean sheet, he went up to 80 or 90 quid, even though he wasn't number one. So so basically played one game that qualifies, get a clean sheet, and you're making like 800%, which is pretty mad. But that that's the way young goalkeepers go. You know, people don't know them, and then they get in, they do well, and all of a sudden there's more demand, and that demand shoves up the price. So, For sure. so there we go. Um, there's a good few familiar names here. One of the names we yeah. really spoke about before coming on, uh, is Rocco Rios Novo. Now, again, if anyone was around the last season, this guy got some Champions League games for Atlanta United because Brad Guzan yeah. was away with the national team. And he did really well. I don't think he kept a clean sheet, but he saved pe the, I think they won a game in penalties and he was like instrumental in it. But he's actually yeah. on the way back to, to Lanús or Lanús in, in Argentina, it looks like. And Yeah, he was only on loan at Atlanta. So um, so we bit of an unusual one because obviously I think they'd maybe just signed them his backup to Gujan. But I find with these guys, like, obviously a really good age. He's playing for Argentinian youth teams. So I think he was under 
18 Argentinian goalkeeper and things, and uh, maybe it's more potential at the moment, but, you know, there's always seems to be teams in the MLS and stuff looking for goalkeepers, but America go around this year, so, you know, aye. I don't, interestingly, he's not on this, but he was on the summary, like, um, and quick names mentioned sort of later on, but Hassal, you know, obviously, he's a good example as well, somebody like who, well, it's an obvious backup, and you just think, well, he's not going to get in front of Crepo, and then two minutes later, LA have signed Crepo. <laughs> he's the number one. So, and he's like, before that, he'd buy him for like 20 quid, and now he's selling, because he's playing through the summer, he's selling for over 250, 260, or whatever. So, it's definitely worth um, doing that. And also, it's not particularly shown by this list, but if you've got somebody who is a really like good number one, so say, for example, you had a couple of Martin Paez. Um, and he was selling for like 400 in the limited like if you'd have bought two of the Kaiser for 30 quid when Paez was dropped you'd have been in profit yeah so for me sometimes that's a no brainer like if you've got a young guy who's the obvious backup then you know why not cover it because 14, 15, 20 quid is just brilliant value across a career anyway I mean, that's just a no brainer buy for me if you think the guy's good it's just like if you're willing to be patient enough, that's just brilliant value anyway. But they give you a bit of cover if you've maybe got the number one goalkeeper as well. It's quite interesting. So, um, so yeah. Then there's some other names on this, like so Lawal um, and our poster. Yep. They both are at Lask, um, and they've th- this kind of weird one to include because the number one at Lask Schlager is really good, but. Both Lowell and Poster both played for Juniors O, so that's their reserve team, cool. and they're in, like, in a, Europe, uh, a lower division, so they're getting game time. So I think that's an interesting one as well because you can kind of look and see that they're playing and, and all that sort of stuff as well. So they're actually, rather than sitting about doing nothing, they're getting game time, and that's just I think that's crucial for young goalkeepers that like, need to learn. So like, if they're just sitting doing nothing, not getting any game time at all, like, they're probably not developing in any way. So... The, those types of guys I think are, are really interesting. I don't really see anything specifically happening with Schlager, but I didn't see Crepo moving either, you know. So, like, you know, you get both of them. If he gets injured, um, one of them's going to come in and play in the first team, I think. So, you know, that, that, that type of thing's quite interesting too. Plus, maybe, you know, they might at some stage think they're ready to play for a better team than juniors, though, like, on loan. You know, maybe go out and play for more of a first team. Um, as well, so that's interesting. Um, a lot of the Asian guys kind of made this list as well, and I, I think it's kind of more along the lines of like you just don't know when they're going to play. <laughs> so, it's like it's a real dice um, over there, isn't it? What the guy that really jumped out to me was Yuma Obata because you've got him listed as a J two player now because obviously the yeah, gal to get relegated. And it reminded yeah. me, I picked up a goalkeeper called uh, Luke Koopmans on the recommendation of Fox in the Box, who's a football football manager, Twitch uh, guy. And uh, he got relegated, but he's he got relegated as a backup. They lost the back, they lost the number one. Now he's the number one, and it looks like they'll be getting promoted. So I might yeah. eventually after twelve months. And it's weird because like you know that'll happen next season. Now that's not going to happen anytime soon, but it feels really close to me now. And having those yeah. guys that it's maybe a promotion away, like we spoke about Chevalier in the last video, he's on loan, you know, whether they get promoted or not, it's irrelevant to him. But those uh, division below guys can way go under the radar because they don't get cards minted either while they're there. Yeah, and a bat is only 20. So, like, the reason I include wow. I own a couple already, but Sloik left. So, yep. Tokyo bought Sloik. So, basically, it looks like he's going to get a game. Now, I've not actually checked if he's played any J2 games yet, but. Like he's basically highly likely to be getting some games, and you know, obviously either they could get up, in which case then you've got a playing goalkeeper, or he could impress there, and you know, he could get a move or whatever. I mean, Japan and Asia is kind of funny; like they don't really seem to like young goalkeepers. Like if you're okay, I mean, at that point, like although he was rotated, he played most of the last season, and I thought it was a good price at hundred quid because I was thinking, well. They played most of the games last season. Maybe they just rotated them out a bit at the end, and then bang, first game, some thirty-five-year-old guys playing. So, like, so, you, but you know that. But obviously, if you get one of these guys and and they play over the summer when there's no Europe on and they're consistently playing, then 
yeah, you're going to make three, four X that I think. So can be can be worth picking them up, you know, particularly if they're not playing and nobody's interested and you get a cheap option or whatever. Um, definitely worth having a look at them. What do you think about this guy you've got at Charleroi, Siachig? Yeah, he's an interesting one. He's only 18, but he came in one of the, the new names lists. So I noticed him because he's got a rookie card and he, he wasn't in the squad at the start of the season, but some way Charleroi had them on the bench or whatever. And so I started kind of looking into him from that point of view. So I don't know a great deal about him, but... Um, just found it really intriguing that he'd, he'd been added in at that point. So I think he's, he's one for the future, obviously. Um, he's got so, you've got so much time, and obviously one of the key things I've included here is you can get this on So Rare Data. It was a great function. It tells you on So Rare Data when you search the player, but under 23 until 2028. So he put him away for a season or two, and he, he ends up playing somewhere. Like Kuke came through again, and he wasn't playing, and he, he moved, and he, he was playing then all of a sudden you've still got two or three years left of 23 usage and you know he, sometimes these guys come out they're a wee bit more expensive than normal because they didn't have any cards so obviously the rare's only like 140 150 quid i think he can he's probably went up slightly now actually believe it or not i think he's a wee bit more now but i think he's limited still selling for around about that price um so yeah i think he's the type of guy where you can just kind of have a bit of a punt on him for the future he's a young european rookie card and he's been in squads so it's obviously quite relevant you know like what's he doing in a squad unless they think he's actually good enough to take a step up at some point so probably the name that jumped out to me on this list was Finn Damon who I've, I've been a big fan of since watching your uh, Germany win the Euros uh, not last summer but the one before but again, yeah. he brings up an interesting situation because not only is he a backup but he also loses his U23 status at the end of yeah. this year and that does offer some opportunities for like you, you know we've spoke a lot about backups in the situations where they can actually come to fruition with a guy like that as we all know u23 keepers carry a premium and with backups it's not quite as strong as, as a starter of course but um yeah. with guys like that like so finn damon like it could be called md right a u23 backup that you've got high hopes for when he loses that u23 we would expect to pick him up cheaper, but would that stop you, Mark? The guy not being U23 if you really back him? Um, I don't think so, but I think like he looks a good quality because he's he's obviously played for, for Germany and stuff before as well. So like you know he, he's playing in a good league. If he plays and he's good, then he's gonna be a champion goalie as well at a good age. Yep. So look at guys like Mary, um a bad example because he couldn't save himself I don't think but um, I used to own him but like he's been honking anytime I've seen him playing but anyway he's rotated and he's rotated back out but he goes for even though he's not playing just now he's still going for 0.5 or something for a rare now obviously he's been in Italy squads and everything so they've been a bit harsh there but yeah if you get you get a guy who gets in at like 24 25 or whatever good champion goalkeeper go have a good value anyway so I think you've got to factor in how much you're pain for these guys as well so obviously we talked in the previous video about like guys like Verbruggen who was like 19 and he's played for the team already and everything I think you can pay more for guys like you know that they've played before and once they get in they'll probably stay in and then you'll be looking at oh, three years under 23s left and you might even at some point be the best under 23 goalkeeper on the platform or whatever so you factor in stuff like that and you can pay a bit more but I mean Finn Damon Although he's a wee bit more expensive than some of the backups, you know, 40 quid's not too bad for a limited. Um, you see what a lot of the limited goalkeepers are selling for now as well, you know, like when they're doing well or they're popular, this guy's going for five, six, seven hundred or whatever. So, totally. yeah, a really good uplift there. And yeah, so yeah, more of a long term buy type thing. But if you're able to do it or you've got the patience, um, it's a really good strategy. Just build up either starting goalkeepers for later for less or some profit to sell them on so we've got a few starters in this list okay so we've got Kosei Tani we've got Philip yep. Menzel we've got Lee Guang Yon and we've got Guilherme Deitch okay Sereng yep. those guys aside if you were to pick one of these guys that you suspect you'll be able to get any notable level of utility out of over the next let's say 12 months who would they be who would you back 
for any reason. Now you're putting me on the spot. I'm just having a look through it to see who I would... You can't say Obata because um, he gets promoted. With JT. <laughs> <laughs> Nuruddin's probably a bit unfair because like, I know obviously he's got in now, so at the time we've put him on the list, he was being rotated and he now is definitely in. So that's kind of interesting one. Again, Lee Guang Yian was a starter. He played four games and then some random dudes played the first game, so I've no idea what's happened with him just now. Obviously... K League and things too. Um, it's going to kind of back one in terms of somebody who I think might get in. Pick somebody that's that surely people will not know. So there's a um, guy here called Damlu, place where Yeni Malaita is for. And he's really cheap, but and he is a backup, but he plays plays all the cup games and stuff. I think and then, and he's played before as a look through sofa score and um, he's played like duty injury and things before. So. Again, it's only 22, 2024 in terms of um, 23's usage. It's like, seems to be a high turnover in goalkeepers. Before we started looking at goalkeepers, I didn't realise how, how much goalkeepers get injured or transferred. Like, just, like, the transfer window was bonkers. Like, you're just looking and, like, Bola is, like, nailed Ghent number one, playing really well, selling for loads. Everybody loves him. In the middle of the window, decided want to go to Fenerbahce and he's been dropped. And he's not went to Fenerbahce, so now you can't use him. And he like, just, it's incredible. So, like, I think a lot of times with the, the backups and things, it's quite good to see guys who are like, have been contributing something and might have a chance of stepping up, whether it's the number one gets sold, gets injured, or they just get the chance themselves. And obviously, there's a lot of teams in Turkey as well. Yeah. So, there's a Again. lot of goalkeeper spots to fill. So, it might even be like, Somebody comes up from you know, because Adana come up this year and then they took Muric in loan. So, like, you might get somebody who comes up from the lower league and wants a goalkeeper or whatever. And now, all of a sudden, they'll be looking to the guys that are playing the cups or whatever. So, yeah, I think he think he's a good shout. Um, the only R1 I like, and we've asked me for one, I'll give you an R1. I like um, Timothy Fayulu Sion. He is out of contract in the summer, and they, yeah. That's another kind of Mary and Ospina situation there, where it's like Flickenstein or the guys called it. I can't remember. Um, he's played, Fayola's played, the been in, they've been out. And there's one point, look back in Sofa score, and what somebody played four games, the next one played five games, and our guy was back in, and that type of thing. But um, but he is good. He's uh, he's a bit raw, but he's good, and he's out of contract in the summer, so kind of gives a bit of natural movement there. Like, what's he going to do? Are they going to play him because they want him to stay? Or he's just going to bugger off somewhere else to play. So, yeah, I think he's quite a good chance to um, get some usage out of him. And I, I bought his super rare, so we'll see if that was a good move or not. But it wasn't as expensive as um, the playing super rare. So it was a good amount of money. So, like, hopefully that pays off. But um, I, he's, he's also 2024 for 23. So I like still get two years like after this year, you know. So I think it's kind of... I don't know if he's as good as a Koi, but that type of profile, you know, yeah, quite quite a kind of strong goalkeeper, good good aerially, a bit raw, maybe not that good on the ball and stuff, you know. So I know a lot of the top teams now are looking for like guys like Philip Cohn, guys that are actually comfortable on the ball, but a lot of these teams that are playing mid table in leagues are just looking for somebody that can make a save. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Totally. We'll, we'll see where he totally. ends up, but um, I've got loads of them. Every scarcity, so I'll either have egg in my face or I'll be, I'll be looking very clever. Um, the, yeah, I, I, he's good. The player on this list that kind of fits that same mould to Feulu, like that's and kind of like Murich as well, is uh, Joseph Martinez at Leipzig. Yeah. So yeah, you, you know that's Mark because you're the encyclopedia of goalkeepers. But Blaswich is signed <laughs> on to be the backup for next year under Kalashi, yeah. so it very much feels like Joseph is going to get some loan time next year. Now, he is not going to be U23 yeah. for that, which is the, the sore part, but he will look yeah. to be a playing keeper next year. Yeah. I think he, he um, when Galashi was injured, he came in and he done quite well too. He did. So that's what kind of, what kind of drew me to him. Um, and I think he, when he came in and he played, even like, he was like 40 quid or whatever, so it's actually expensive compared to some of these guys, but I think when he came in, he played like one game. He was up to like eighty or ninety. So even just playing one game, or whatever, no guarantee of staying in the team or whatever. Just people seeing him playing, doing well or whatever, is you know, put a wee bit of a burst on his price. But um, 
that, that's exactly kind of what I was thinking, what you were saying. Um, he has got a contract in 2024 as well, so you obviously they had some longer term plans for him. Who knows? Like obviously Blazwich is supposed to be coming in as a backup, but they could it could be the backup to him. You just don't know. Like yep. you know, they might know what they are seeing there because when we have goalie situations in the Bundesliga, like I looked and I couldn't believe Timo Horn wasn't number one and stuff. So he was good. Yeah. Um, obviously I went through a rough spell or whatever but I think it's Schwabi or something that plays now and I was like, I nearly bought him I was like, oh, that's, that's a good price for Timo Horn and I looked as he's not playing <laughs> so, I think he um, might be back in now because I was looking at Cologne the other day yeah. but yeah, I, you're right, he did definitely DNP for a bit he, he definitely wasn't for a while was I'm going to look that up he played the last gonna, match 1-0 win at home I should have bought him then, is that, you're saying I should have bought him yeah. <laughs> I did, he, he played against Frankfurt Um it was DFP. Ah, but, the, but the other guy, um, Schwabe, wasn't on the bench, so something must have happened to him. He must get injured or something. Marvin Schwabe. Yeah, because he played the game before. So, but he had he had lost his place. Um, so, so yeah. Um, but I mean, I think, it, as I said, there seems to be quite a high turnover of goalkeepers and things. Like, just don't realise or didn't realise they get injured that much. Or, like, just. This, um, let's get into all the giveaway stuff before I let you go. I'm still doing monthly giveaways and I'm making it easier to enter. If you want to be entered to win this month's prize or any future giveaways here at the channel, all the same rules will always apply. Hit the subscribe button, you need to be a subscriber to enter, then leave a comment down below. Each month, a random comment from a random video will be selected as the winner, so the more videos you leave a comment on, the better the chance you've got of winning any of my giveaways. All the winners are announced at the end of videos the same way as we're doing here. The best way to keep up with the content has always been to hit the notification bell with all notifications turned on. As always guys, if you've enjoyed the video today, I'd appreciate it if you hit the like button. On screen there now is some other stuff that I've made that YouTube thinks you might enjoy. Stay out of trouble and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.